Now, I've been watching Heather Mater's video on the revealing the secret technique of Tanya Month for that beautiful stained glass glue gun artwork that she does. And I've got my glass, I've got a razor blade, I've got my 70% alcohol that I can spray, and I have my glue gun, but I don't know if I can do this. I think I'm going to call my friend Tiffany Remine and see if we can brainstorm on maybe a different way to do this. There we go. Hey, Tiff. Hey, Lance. <laughs> so I was talking to you about this uh, glue gun technique that people are doing, and I really like it. I, I saw it, and I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I saw it actually on Heather Mater's channel, and it's the Tanya Munt technique. But it requires, as you see down here, <laughs> some glass that I got out of a picture frame, razor blade, Ugh, and I'm a real scared with the razor blade, but razor blade and like 70% alcohol that you would then spray down on that to loosen it up, to loosen up your image once you've done your image of a flower or whatever that you're gonna do down there. And it just seems like a lot to me, and I don't really trust myself that much with the razor blade, with the, oh, <laughs> the glass. All right, back up. That's like way too complicated. Just, there's gotta be a better way to do this. So what you're saying is they're taking glass, they're, yeah. what, the image is underneath it, and then they're tracing the image with the glue on top of the glass, and then they need to use 70% alcohol in order to pry that thing off of there? Yeah, exactly. And it yeah. just seems like a lot, you know? It's like a lot okay. to do. <laughs> the silicone mat technically can be used for baking. That can withstand heat of a glue gun. Could right. Could you have to do it on a silicone mat? Yeah, well, and I got, uh, I got some clear silicone mats the other day um, off Amazon. I don't have one. And I get over here. <laughs> but I know, I'm in my kitchen. I know I got some parchment paper. I'm sure in a drawer over here somewhere. <laughs> So Tiffany and I have then both determined that we could use parchment paper and everybody's got that in their kitchen. So that's an easier, inexpensive alternative if you don't want to purchase a silicone mat. But I think this is gonna really make it a lot easier. And I love these brainstorming sessions that we have sometimes in the morning. And we continued on brainstorming about the various ways using the silicone mat and the parchment paper could really open up new and different ways to do this technique and to possibly utilize skins and building your image off canvas. So I hope you'll enjoy our collaboration. And here's what I came up with as some alternative methods for the glue gun stained glass technique. I'm showing you really quickly the simple swipe that I did for my background and it is very kind of Gail Burston like I just love Gail's swipes and her schmears and she's one of the people that I've always kind of looked up to and that I really watched and and learned from when I first started in looking at fluid art and during pandemic is kind of when I started that journey and and uh, yeah I love Gail's work and so I thought this might be a pretty cool background um, for my mermaid that you're going to see that I'm about to construct. If you're finding this video interesting and informative, please give me a thumbs up and like it and subscribe to my channel. And when you do, ring the bell so you get notified when I upload new content. And here is my line drawing for my mermaid. Uh, I based her on kind of like a wall art metal ornament that I saw and I thought it was pretty so I decided to interpret it as a line drawing and make a mermaid you know from that idea and then try to make it into a shape that would lend itself to be kind of like this stained glass technique. So you really have to kind of simplify things like that if you want to base it on something else because as you start to do this you learn sometimes the design does definitely need to be simplified because you're trying to, here you see me, I'm piping the acrylic paint that's mixed with a little bit of Floetrol 
into these shapes. And in this case, it's the buff acrylic paint that is her skin tone. And so you really, you know, you, you try to be careful and really try to get your air bubbles out and squeeze your paint into the channels of whatever color uh, you're working with. In this case, it's the flesh skin tone. And so sometimes simpler is better when you're constructing these designs. And now, as you can see here, I'm using the beautiful micas from Color Art, uh, Tide Pool and Azure. And they're so beautiful and sparkly. And I, I love these from Color Art. And I am a Color Art affiliate and you can use my code LanceTravis622 and get a 20% discount. It helps me out if you do that. It helps me out a little bit. And so I'll leave a link to Color Art in my description box. And yeah, if you find this interesting and kind of cool and fun uh, and you want to purchase some Color Art products, please go there and use my code. And as you can see here, I'm now constructing kind of like a mosaic with these mica pieces. And I'm going to try to like use the darker color with the lighter silvery colors to kind of shade her tail as I'm constructing it. And I'm doing that with some blue Artist Loft light blue paint. Soft body paint is her base color that color of paint for the tail and then I'm just using the flakes and just kind of placing them right into the paint and letting it dry because it will become the skin and I think it's great because it really represents the scales very well it looks really cool and really sparkly like fish scales and here you can see I've used golden poppy and big apple prism pour colors and that sparkly tealish greenish blue is sea monster and that's a gorgeous prism pour color that's just come out and these prism pour colors are just really incredible for this technique hello again um i am actually doing this portion of the video talking straight to the camera live not a voiceover imagine that <laughs> i know i usually do voiceovers but there's no one around my house today and i feel like i can do this part of the video in silence and peace um, only my water heater out here in the garage is gurgling in the background, but this is my mermaid done in the Tanya Month style that you might have seen on Heather Mater's video. And somewhere within this video, I'll leave it, um, an end card to that video that you can check out. Um, obviously Tiffany and I have collaborated on this and the whole reason for doing it this way was I feel like I am... A klutz at times I don't necessarily want to use a razor blade and <laughs> or a piece of glass that I'm getting out of a frame that might cut myself and I know Heather will attest to that she cut herself in the video um, just my personal preference so in Tiffany and I having phone conversations that we do Tiffany had the a great brainchild idea of this is a see-through silicone mat and I'm just showing it to you again you'll have already seen it in this video um, that I got off Amazon. I can leave the links to everything that I'm using in uh, my description box. And this is just a piece of regular old Reynolds um, parchment paper, baking parchment paper. And I'm gonna use this just to flip her over, to peel her off, flip her over, and spray her with some 3M spray mount, and possibly a little bit of Krylon um, crystal clear varnish I may spray on the back of it too and then position her I know exactly where I want to position her on my canvas um, but I will show you a couple things uh, one being if I did not know where I wanted her on my canvas I could put my canvas and here's the image of the swipe that I did that I thought was kind of cool and somewhat watery looking and oceanic looking so if I didn't really know where I wanted her I could just take her because I can see through this silicone sheet I can move her around and go okay yeah there's about where I want her and so this is good for a lot of reasons um, she was created on the silicone mat as basically like a skin with the um, with the glue gun outline and so I made sure that she was really really dry uh, you'll have to make sure that's probably like a day or more 
of letting it dry if you're gonna make a skin off canvas and on the silicone sheet or on parchment paper. Cause you could, if you didn't want to invest the money, you could make these things, whether it be a flower, a crane, a mermaid, a fish, like whatever you want to make off the canvas on your silicone or parchment paper. And then you also are not risking maybe putting it somewhere you didn't want or something getting on the canvas and then it becomes a pain in the rear end to try to get it cleaned off or whatever. So there's, a, I think a lot of, uh, value that people might find in doing this technique. If they A, feel like they're a klutz like me <laughs> and they don't want to cut themselves or use the spray alcohol and the glass and all that, um, you know, the way Tanya does it is great. It's beautiful. And the way Heather did it in the video, but I just don't know that I can feel like I wouldn't cut myself. And it's a lot of other stuff. Whereas I can just get a baking sheet pretty inexpensively, silicone baking sheet or parchment paper and, and do the same thing. Um, so anyways, so I'm gonna show you now, I'm just gonna spray her and then get her on the canvas. So I'll show you, I'm gonna peel her off and you wanna do it kind of carefully. Pretty easy though. Ew. Okay. All right, I got her off. She's movable now. Let's see here. Get my canvas back here. I kind of know where I want her. Oh, wait, I can't do that yet. <laughs> Don't want to get ahead of myself. I got to flip her over on the parchment paper and spray her down. Which there's the back side. You can see the back side. And I used a lot of beautiful. Prism pour, like color art colors and some other regular paint colors, but a lot of the dominant colors in her are the prism pour, which have the beautiful sparkle and shimmer to them. And so anyways, I'm gonna shake up my spray melt. There we go. Okay. Spray her off a little bit. Move the canvas back. And I'm doing this in my garage so that there's ventilation. So you want to make sure you do this in a well-ventilated area because the fumes are kind of strong. And I know I want her about there. And position. Hold on. Don't want her to get too set up here. Position about right there. That is good. She is now in her new home on this swipe. <laughs> and you want to make sure that you've got a good you know, seal on the edges. And I actually may go along here with a tiny bit of a brush and some Lipitex varnish. Cause I'm going to spray the whole thing and it will be shiny and varnished as well. But I wanted to at least show you this part of getting her onto the canvas and I'm going to do some more embellishing and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. And Tiffany and I have gone back and forth about what we do and we've done things. Obviously the themes that we've done are slightly different. I kept this one really simple because I wanted it to, to show people that, you know, it's pretty elegant swipe looks beautiful and it's featuring her very well. I had several other pieces that I could have put her on, but I felt like they were busy and I was gonna have to probably put a whole bunch more things on there and then worry about my composition a little bit more. And I am doing that with some other pieces, but oops, I'm getting an air bubble there. We'll make sure we don't get air bubbles in her body. Let's see, reposition her a tiny bit. Okay. Okay. Which is good. You want to make sure, just as I'm doing here, that you got her sealed down good where, where the skin goes. Okay. And the good thing about her is once she's now sealed to this, I've got a little line there, but I still have
don't have the convenience of building all this off canvas. And so even so, even though I've got a little line through her there, I can now fill this up with some of the buff um, acrylic paint and that will get rid of that. So even though that happened, no worries. If things like that happened or will happen, then you always have that option. But now you've got your image exactly where you want it and everything is all good there. Uh, not a lot of mess or fuss trying to get her obviously from the silicone mat to the canvas. And you do have the luxury of if you've got that clear mat or even if you've got this parchment paper, you can see through the parchment paper and sort of tell where you're putting or where you'd like to put your creation that you've built off canvas. So anyways, so let's go on to the next phase of this. We'll be embellishing. I'll probably show you how I'm gonna put some more paint there and we'll move it right along. So now I'm gonna draw on my lineless parchment paper. Kind of seeing where she's at, I'm gonna draw where I want my, um, we're gonna call them maybe like seaweed. They're gonna be some kind of underwater foliage or underwater kelp or seaweed, but we're gonna make them a little decorative. And so I'm gonna make these together so that this is a little bit easier. Let me try to think of, might go there. I'm gonna draw it up to here. And then what I wanna do is make a little circle. I'm gonna make a little circle here. This is just something fun, you know, to sort of embellish and make things a little different. And maybe we'll start this one a little lower and make it go this way. Really won't matter because once I've piped it out with the glue gun, I can put it wherever I want to really. That's the beauty of it. And we'll do one more right here. So those are pretty simple and they'll have a little bit of a curly Q thing off the top. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see how we want to do it. But that's the other great thing about doing this off canvas. If I don't like it, I don't have to use it. And, you know, who knows? We might even put a little leaf shape here. And a little leaf shape there. There we go. That'll be nice. I think that'll give it a little bit more bling and design and give her a little something, something extra. Um, but yeah, it can be whatever you want it to be. I mean, that's the beauty of being able to do these things this way. And I can see where it goes. So I know I could position them kind of in this idea of where, where we have it right now. Um, so on to piping it with the glue gun. Okay, so here we are, we're gonna use our metallic glue, uh, this is the metallic glue gun sticks that I get. Very pretty. And I can leave a link for this in my description box. Uh, they come with 24 sticks. And this was the only one that I could find that could go to my little Gorilla Glue Gun that's for mini sticks. Um, I have a size larger that is also pretty usable and doable, but this was the best I could find for finer detail stuff. Um, so if you're doing something larger, you might want to use the other size up, which is like a 0.4, I think, but this is the mini sticks. These are, um, yeah, just right off Amazon and they got here pretty quick. So I'll leave that in my description box. Now I'm going to show you how I create this design on the lineless parchment paper. So I'm just going to follow the lines of my line drawing and create my shapes on my parchment paper. And I won't bore you with everything, but I did want to show you kind of 
kind of how I use it. So we'll go here. Now I'm showing you how I'm following my little line drawing on the parchment paper with my beautiful gold metallic glue and finishing off this design and this little line drawing uh, with the gold is gonna give it a little bit more composition and a little bit more bling with the pearls we're gonna add a dollop of the glue in there and stick one of my flat back pearls on there and then I'm showing you kind of the finished product here where the line drawing you can see is it's very beautiful and it does add some flair and some composition to my mermaid and I'm going to put another pearl in her hair and I'm gonna put one in her hand because she looks like she's reaching out for something and um, yeah but I'm wrapping things up just wanted to show you those fine kind of finishing touch details and you know I, I really have enjoyed doing this technique and I'm gonna do it again I really think it's fun I hope this has inspired you to try it too as I said Tiffany is going to be up after me and we're collaborating and she's doing some amazing things with this technique and she kind of takes it off in another lane and perspective and puts another spin on it and so I hope that you'll watch her video as well and I'm also on the Friday evening with friends and I know I, I love being on this evening with my friends that are on Fridays and it starts off with I think Acrylic Creations by Jay Witte and Cynthia Porter Studio and Nate Bright Art and up before me is It's Art by Donna M. So please check out everybody's videos and I hope you enjoyed uh, My Little Mermaid there. I, I'll have everybody's videos in my description box and please check out Tiffany's video up after mine. I want to thank Tanya Munt for being the beautiful inspiration for this collaboration um, and Heather Mater and you should check out people like Taslima Maya Art and AB Creative. They also do some beautiful glue gun artwork and I hope this has inspired you to maybe give it a try and until we meet again, I can't wait until I see you again for some more fun pouring together.